ambition drove you to abandon everything you had. For everything you wanted. The carious gut of the coward, ripe with toxic pusillanimity. To destroy the thing is to destroy yourself. But the world will spring anew from the memory you kept of it. Pray her convictions lent some small comfort in her final moments. Refusing enrollment in the fall, you took up in that moldering brownstone, where I joined you in a vain attempt to assuage your aspirations. Now, free from academic oversight and moral restraint, you vowed to reach into the blackest depths of the occult sciences and be the first to grasp the secret of the Iron Crown. The polarity between us reversed. I became your reluctant assistant in dozens of deplorable experiments, crushed in the grip of your ambition. You calibrated prisms along the points of the crown, cackling in smug satisfaction as wavelengths of hideous and indescribable light burned our eyes. You attempted to map the geometric proportions of the crown to frequencies of sound, and in the resulting silence, our ears welled with blood. At night, I could hear you shuffling about the house, muttering with diabolic intent. The walls of the place closed tight about us, and it seemed at times that the outside world was a dream we could scarcely remember. Desperate to somehow help you regain yourself, I prepared a breakfast and an urgent appeal. My words fell on deaf ears, the food flung to the floor. Your appetites demanded more than I could hope to provide. The crown was a hateful and ravenous thing. It had consumed our careers, our lives, and our friendship. And still, it hungered. Unable to suffer your unprincipled overreach any longer, I made ready to depart, imploring you to rejoin me in more wholesome pursuits. Instead, you babbled of impossible measurements, ushering me down into the bolted cellar. In the dim light, I recoiled at the preparations you had made. Four bodies laid out along the lateral points of the crown. As the dagger's blade revealed itself through my chest, I understood. I was to be the fifth 